All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Mastering Mondays and this master class on WaveLab Pro 9. My name is Matthew Lolte Hepworth, and I have been here at Mac Pro Video and Ask Video ever since about 2007, covering programs like WaveLab and also Cubase and Premiere Pro and some of the Isotope products. And today we're going to be spending time in WaveLab Pro 9. And I've been using WaveLab ever since version 1.0 <laughs> and uh, and that's back when it was only on the PC in fact it wasn't until the last uh, past couple of years where they've been able to uh, to provide WaveLab as a cross-platform application to run on both Mac and Windows which uh, open up a whole new world of mastering to uh, to Apple users uh, like me and actually that was the last program I was waiting for <laughs> to jump ship and and finally just uh, kind of get rid of my last Windows machines and concentrate on the uh, Macintosh. But regardless of what whether you're working on the Mac or Windows platform, the things I'm going to be showing you today are going to be applicable because everything that they've done in WaveLab is identical across both platforms. So uh, so we uh, we we don't. Uh, just just like Steinberg, we don't care which platform you're using or if you're using both because WaveLab works on both sides. So uh, let's get started by showing you one of the things that I love most about WaveLab 9, and that is the dark mode. Now, some of you uh, have not uh, looked at some of the other skins or some of the other looks that WaveLab 9 has, but let me show you how to get into it. Right now on your screen, you're seeing my screen, and it's in its default mode, which means that it's kind of bright, and in fact, this is the default light mode. But if you want to change it to the dark mode, there's a couple of things you need to make sure of. First, you need to be on the most current version of WaveLab, so I'm going to go under the WaveLab menu and look right down here. You can see that my version, if I zoom in here a little bit so you can actually see these little tiny numbers, we're on WaveLab 9.0.25. This dark feature that I'm going to show you was added in this version, so make sure that you have updated to the most current version, because I really think you're going to like the dark mode. So I'm going to click on that window to get rid of it, and now I'm going to go to the file menu right here and look at the preferences button. Let me just zoom in on this a little bit so you can see. So here's the preferences. And if we go up here to the top, ooh, I'm going to need to zoom out here a little bit. If we go over to the preferences and then go to the global setting, and then instead of being on the general tab, looking on the display tab, then you can see that there's a setting for theme. Right now we're in the default light mode. There's also a dark mode, which some people really like. It makes things just a little bit dimmer because the light mode is a little loud <laughs> as far as how bright it is. So on the dark theme, it's going to tone that down a bit. But then there's this new mode called the black mode, and watch what happens. Ooh. <laughs> now suddenly I have a much cooler vibe in my uh, control room here. It just settles down, it lets me see things a little bit easier, so uh, I would recommend you try black mode if you want to have a little bit of a toned down window, or a toned down look when you're looking at things. So I'm going to zoom back out here. And so, let's talk about a little bit of the layout in the new version of, of WaveLab. Uh, first, um, there are six different windows that are available to you in the first window, and this is called a workspace. So actually, let me, uh, let me call up a uh, file here. Let's just open a file. Actually, I've got a file open, so I'll just go to view. So let's look at the six different windows, because right now, if you're just getting started, you're probably thinking that this is one big window, and it's not. It's six. So let's look up here in the upper left-hand corner, and we can see that this part of the display screen right here has several different tabs in it. There's a tab for file browser, project manager, and several others. Next to this is the second window. So here's the level meter, the loudness meter, oscilloscope, and a few other 
uh, windows that you can look at. And then there's another tab right here for the spectroscope and the time code. And then there's a thing right in the center of your screen known as the ribbon. And the ribbon is very important, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But then underneath that, we have the file window so that we can see the waveform in both the overview and the edit view. And finally, on the far right-hand side, we have the master section. The master section is kind of like a rack of signal processors, just like you're used to having in a a, uh, in a tangible or non-virtual mastering studio, this is where you install all the plugins for your mastering or any sort of audio processing. And one of the things I should mention right now that's very important to understand about the master section is the faders. Now, I'm talking about these left and right faders right here. A lot of people don't know that the position of the master level faders will impact the overall output of the files when you render them out of WaveLab. So uh, I find a lot of people setting these either too high or too low because they think this is their monitoring volume. <laughs> so they'll turn them down just to get their studio monitors where they sound good and then they'll do their mastering and all of their rendering and all the files come back as really really quiet and that's because the faders do control the master output level of your rendered files so just like with any control in WaveLab if you want to get a setting back to its normal default position you can double click it or sometimes you have to hold down the command uh, if you're on a Mac or the control key and double click on that control to get it back to zero. But instead of having to drag it all the way up to what you think is almost zero, just double click the control and it'll jump back to its default position. So that's the master uh, section, and we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in the master section because one of the other things that they've done in WaveLab 9 is they've added a really cool suite of mastering plugins for you to work with called Master Rig, and we're going to be spending quite a bit of time on that. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started on some of the... Oh, you know what? I am going to go back. Just one other thing I want to mention. The layout of all of these windows is entirely customizable. So if you have made changes to your workspace, uh, either by rearranging the one monitor that you have, or if you have... Uh, taken some windows and put them on other monitors if you're using multiple screens inside of your studio and you want to get back to the original or you want to save your own presets, you can come under the workspace pull down menu and save your own different window layouts. Or if you want to get back to the default settings, you'll notice right here there is a default and that will get you all the way back to the factory defaults and you can switch those around at any time. So if your uh, screen looks a little bit different than mine, then you could go under the workspace and call it the default layout right now so that what I'm looking at is exactly what you're looking at on your computer if you're working in WaveLab as we go through the master class. Let's talk a little bit about uh, mastering. Mastering is kind of a dark art. There's, there's a lot of people that uh, describe it in a lot of different ways. And the way that I think of mastering is... I, I look at it from kind of an old school method, and that's probably because I've been doing this a really long time. But, you know, when you're mixing, when you're in a, a DAW like Cubase or Nuendo or Live or Pro Tools, you're usually mixing together a whole bunch of individual instruments or audio or MIDI tracks. But mastering, one of the big parts of mastering is making all of the tracks or all of the components that are going to be in a collection of music, like an album or a CD, 
uh, you're going to make them all fit together so that they can live together on a compilation of music. And so that's one of the most important things to to me to pay attention to is how all of the individual songs or tunes that you're putting together in a collection of music, you know, how they all fit together and so that they all sound the same. They sound complementary to one another. So mixing is the mixing of individual components of a single song. And one of the big things in mastering is your assembling and treating the finished mixes with the proper treatments to make them all fit together and sound appropriate together on a collection of music. 